Toho Lost Words had good events. Toho Lost Words also had a bad event. This one was kind of somewhere in the middle. The Sister Festival was less of a linear story, and more of a series of character interactions played for heartwarming emotional reactions. What little plot there is feels a bit undercooked. First off, this name is terrible. Things like these aren't why Toho fans are Toho fans. Toho subverts tropes like these, so it's disappointing that Lost Word would play into stuff like this. The event is set up as a series of matches between siblings and surrogate siblings. Minoriko leads the sibling side, and Moku leads the anti-sibling side. Even though the Aki sisters take center stage, the reason they do is because of how they misunderstood what Aya and Nitori were saying. A super boring trope that isn't really engaging at all. Thematically, the event is going for the idea that surrogate sisters are just as valid as actual sisters, which isn't a bad theme at all. Moku's so adamant about the competition because of her relationship with Kaini, which is a fair way to interpret their relationship. It's just that the way of communicating the theme is very hit or miss. Every match ends in a tie to reinforce the message. Until the end, no sister pair can beat a surrogate sister pair. It's a bit clever the first two times, but after three ties you realize where the matches are going and everything becomes pretty boring. Finally, something that's a bit subtle at first but does bring the narrative down is the fact that so far, this is the only event with one background. The Misty Lake. Airsoft battle felt like it was progressing because the time of day and the background kept changing. Something as simple as making it night in the Misty Lake would have helped break the monotony a lot. But, okay. Not everything has to follow the same structure. The last event was a detective mystery, which felt a whole lot different than an airsoft battle. So maybe the writing's strength is in its character interactions. Eh. Before we go to main interactions, this is the first event that has interactions between main stages. Not much to say here, except that some are pretty cute. Remu trying to get some to do her chores is cool, the Raisins have a conversation that's rooted in four layers of irony, and Kosuzu tries to call Aki her sister, but Aki decides she is not getting sibling zoned. As for the main interactions, their quality is a bit inconsistent. The first one gives us a super weird pair related to darkness, and the most boring by-the-book Scarlet Sister interaction ever. Yeah, this event does not leave a good first impression. The one after is a bit better. I like Lunasa, so it's cool to see her banter with her sisters, and her friendship with Ron over not wanting to overbear on their other sister figures is charming. The third one, though... This is where I think the event finally writes something really good. At first, I was a bit upset that Xion was even with Jun. Why would Xion ever leave Tenshi's side? But their interaction makes up for it. The goal of their part of the contest is to scream, I love you, as loud as possible, and they're paired against Suwako and Sane. Jun takes issue with how Moria Shrine treats religion like a business. And after June spent so much time at Miorin Temple, I think this makes total sense. A climax of this interaction is June yelling, I love you, sis, into the mountains. But then they're not able to win because she's too embarrassed to verify to the judges that she yelled this out. Xion begs her to yell it again, and a chase ensues. This is really cool June writing. She isn't just a super mean garbage person. She has values and truly cares for the people around her. On the other side, Sine and Sawako don't win because Kaneko gets into a fight with Sawako over how Sawako gets to be a sister, but Kaneko doesn't. This is when I realized. A lot of this event doesn't have characterization that I'd call bad, but more so, uncommon. Kaneko wanting to be called a sister seems super weird, until you put it into the perspective of her being petty with Sawako. Then it makes sense. Unlike some others, I don't have that many issues with the characterization seen in this event. It's more so the things the characters have to talk about, rather than how the characters talk about them, that brings the event down. The next interaction features... 
Man, I don't want to think about the maid events again. On the other side, though... Oh, Ben Ben and Yatsuhashi. I'm pretty certain that more people know about the other Raisin than Yatsuhashi. And the fact that we got these two before Raiko, Shino Mario, and Seija is pretty cool. Zoom brings back characters when they service the plot, and Lost Word is totally fitting that spirit here. The actual writing here? Well, I mean, any characterization for these two is always good. Sakia says that they aren't real siblings to demotivate them. Like Kaneko, this seems a bit weird, but Sakia's been pretty mean in a lot of Toho works, especially Grimoire of Usami. Ben Ben and Yatsuhashi talk about how their bond is stronger than blood. Generic, but alright to read. And then, another tie. The next two interactions were probably my favorites. Kaguya choosing a fairy to counter the Watatsukis is totally something she'd do. And after June, feels like the second good bit of writing this event does. The Wakatsukis being scared of the fairy is a fair enough reason for why they can't instantly win the battle, but the interaction ends in a tie because the groups get caught up in an emotional conversation about sisterhood. Emotions are why Kaguya abandoned the moon in the first place, and the princesses are seen as super weird on the moon because they're so much more emotional than their peers. Star Sapphire's newfound camaraderie with the Lunarians is also pretty cute. Even though the tie itself is annoying, I think when reflecting, this is one that actually makes sense and services the story. And then, there's the Komeijis. Satori is my favorite Toho character, and I'm happy to say she's written really nicely here. She prepares for her section of the contest ahead of time by reading the judges' minds to find out that it's themed around napping. So, she makes Koishi some pajamas. Her sudden mind reading makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Something else that helps this part of the story is that it finally becomes a bit self-aware. Kosuzu leads the anti-sibling force squad here, and decides to go for a draw on purpose so that Moku could ultimately win. And Kosuzu does actually get the draw. But in the process of that, we have Koishi drifting back and forth between dozing off and playing around. Satori keeps trying to get Koishi to cooperate, but to no avail. After some antics, Koishi apologizes to Satori for not being able to fall asleep, to which Satori accepts, but thinks in her mind that maybe Koishi has some ulterior motive. But she doesn't. As Koishi says, I'm doing my best to make you happy, but you always have that troubled look on your face. And every time I see you like that, I think I did something bad again. Satori can read people's thoughts, so she's used to being in control. But the person she loves the most is also the only person whose thoughts she can't read. So Satori overthinks everything when Koishi's involved. And Koishi is really the only one that can put a dent into Satori's plans. And then while Satori is apologizing and saying how she's proud of Koishi, Koishi gets distracted and runs off. Koishi's unconscious mind flows, ironically, like a stream of consciousness novel, where everything kind of just drifts with loose threads. I know some people don't like how Koishi was written here, but I absolutely loved it. The entire sequence was a fantastic interpretation of Satori, Koishi, and how their sisterly bonds affect each other. Moments like these are why I play Lost Word, and it's such a shame that the event has so few poignant instances like this. The ending epitomizes what I think of this event. Wasted potential. With something like the maid event, I feel like that's bound to be bad. But sisterly bonds? They could have done so much more with the concept. The leaders of the teams face off. How could the Fall Sisters possibly defeat Moku and Kaine? That part's actually executed fairly well. Kane has knowledge of how important the sisters are to the season of Fall, which causes her and Moku to severely overestimate them in combat. Moku and Kaini then argue about who's the older sister in their relationship, which distracts them enough to give the Fall sisters a slight edge. And unleashing their powers at once gives them the win. Moku and Kaini's argument is where I think something was missed, though. 
Them arguing about who's older is actually something I expected, and the conversation itself is cute. But there's an element that's missed that I also think ties into one of the event's main problems. Moku is immortal. She's older than almost everyone in Gensokyo. So, she always has to be the older sister. Hell, even right now, she's an older sister figure to Sumireko. And Moku's probably seen a lot of people die, too. That's why I think she's so adamant about wanting to be a younger sister. Just once in her life, she doesn't want to hold that burden. But the game says nothing about this! What this event was missing, with a few exceptions, were more grounded conversations and interactions for its characters. Stuff like Raisin, Yakurin, and Medicine gradually bonding over an airsoft game, or Kanako and Suwako being the best bombs ever to Sune. But I do think that there is a reason these things were lacking. This event had too many characters. There were like, over 25 with major bits of dialogue. You didn't really follow a constant protagonist like the other events, and writing all of them to have good dialogue is a bit hard. The extra epilogue story adds even more characters and is also very hit or miss like the rest of the event. You get super generic writing for both Nitori and Aya, but then you get a fantastic scene with Reimu where she just nonchalantly says that Yukari and Kasen are more like mothers to her than older sisters. It's a moment that's both touching and hilarious at the same time, and it ends off with Reimu calling the Avatar her younger sister, which is a very cute character moment for both of them. But with these many characters, not everyone gets the breathing room that Reimu gets for her writing. This event had some truly great moments. That alone makes it better than the main event. But overall, I don't think I really had that good of a time. I hope Lost Words' next event is a bit more focused than this one.